In this video, I'm going to show you three different methods, three different ways of how to block out your environments or your level designs inside UE5. And if you're not familiar with blackouts, it is a process of using simple geometric shapes, such as a cube, sphere, cylinder, or a plane to block out, to create the initial shell, the framework, the blueprint of your game world, of your environment. So this way you can prototype very quickly without having to worry about adding detail, texturing, creating materials, and it just allows you to create and prototype right inside the engine very quickly by getting an initial level created extremely quickly so you can jump in there, run around, and begin to test gameplay mechanics. And in UE5, you can do this three different ways. BSP brushes, which are still available in UE5, the modeling mode, and using the existing modular assets. So let's get into it. The first way to block out your environments inside UE5 is to use an old version of BSP brushes that many used for years in UE4. And BSP brushes are still available in UE5 as of 5.3. And I hope they continue to keep them as they are one of the best ways to quickly block out your environments without any hassle. So to get to BSP brushes, make sure you have the Place Actors panel open. If you don't, go to Windows and enable Place Actors. Once you have this place actors panel, switch over to geometry. And here are your BSP brushes, just as you would expect them to look in UE4. And all you would do is just drag any of these primitive shapes into your level. And there are two ways to modify these. First is through the details panel when you have the BSP brush selected. Here you can uh, adjust the brush settings, make them smaller, make them bigger. And different BSP brushes will have different settings. So actually, let me uh, put this one down to uh, 300. If I bring in stairs, for example, stairs will have uh, a lot more options to control, such as step length, width, height, and so on. But the second way to modify your BSP brushes is through geometry editing mode. So once you have a BSP brush placed inside your level and you have it selected, use this drop down menu and enable brush editing. And here you have edit, clip, pen, flip, everything that you would expect in UE4. And then you can select faces very Caesar edges and modify them in real time and have them update. So you don't have to use the details panel. You just simply use the brush editing menu and modify them dynamically, uh, which is a lot faster than having to do the resize through details panel. Now, if you're not familiar with editing BSP brushes, I have a few tutorials on my channel as well as the previous version of Fundamentals, UE4 Fundamentals Volume 1, where we cover use of BSP brushes in detail. But like I said, again, this is a previous version of Unreal. And this is where, this is how everybody used to black out their environments using BSP brushes. And you can still use them in UE5, but as far as I've read, it is obsolete and no longer supported. So you can use it, but they might at some point remove BSP brushes altogether, which I hope they don't. And then of course, once you're done editing your uh, BSP brushes, you can spawn, run around, and you have your Primitive shapes with block and volumes, so you can walk on stairs. So everything is already ready to go. And then once you are done, you just switch over back to selection mode. The second option for blocking out your environments and level designs is to use the new modeling mode that is available in UE5. So the modeling mode is what's replacing the BSP brushes. And with the modeling mode, you can actually create 3D models or static meshes right inside Unreal Engine 5 editor and then use them as your 3D models to populate the world. And by default, modeling mode should be enabled inside your project already. And if you use this drop down menu, just switch over to modeling mode, shift five. And then you'll have all the options here. If you do not see the modeling mode available in the drop down menu, it may be disabled because it is a plugin. So you just go to edit plugins, search for modeling, and make sure that the modeling tools editor mode is enabled. You would, uh, if it's not, you enable it, you might have to restart. And then once you restart the engine, the editor, it will be available for you to use. Now the modeling mode is extremely detailed and has a lot of menus and options. It's almost a small, full 3D modeling application built into Unreal Engine 5. So here on the left hand side, you have a lot of options to choose from, from UVs to baking, to modeling, to creating basic shapes. Now. I go over a lot of these options and what to start with in the new course I released, UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, and there's an entire module in there 
where we cover exactly what you need to start with and exactly how you need to start modeling using the modeling mode. But in terms of blocking things out, modeling mode is a perfect way to block out your environments using the simple primitive shapes right here under create. So the way you would use it is click over to create and uh, create any of the basic primitive shapes such as a box, cylinder to block out your environment. So for example, if I create a box, once you enable the box, you have an interactive uh, menu where you can place this box anywhere inside your level. And then you can uh, enable different options for this specific primitive shape. You can uh, define the width if you want it bigger or smaller. You can uh, adjust subdivisions. So if you're familiar with a 3D application, uh, a lot of these options are going to be very familiar to you. And then once you like how the shape looks, and this is the static mesh you would want to have uh, as a way to block your environment out, you just click accept. And then now you have your static mesh. And then uh, if you need additional ones, you can either add it an existing mesh or just drag in a new one, create a new cylinder, for example, place it, uh, define parameters for it, go through the options here. Once you like how this looks, kind of like this work in progress, just hit accept. And now you have another static mesh. And inside the editor, you can actually duplicate it. Alt, left click, you can duplicate just like you would any other static mesh. Now, the only downside to this method, as, as is by default inside UE5, is the amount of these static meshes that are created and then saved inside your content directory. So if you go to the content folder and click over, there's a new folder named generated. This was just created when we opened up the menu, we created a primitive shape, we inserted it into the level and hit accept. As soon as you do that, a static mesh is created and then saved into a new folder called generated. And then inside this uh, subfolder, if you go inside, here are the two static meshes. And I duplicated, so it uses an instance of the duplication. So I didn't create additional ones. So I can actually delete this one and this one. So here are the two we just created. And anytime you create another additional, for example, let's do a sphere. I click accept. A new version will be created in here. So now I have three. And this is the downside of using this as is. A new static mesh is created and placed inside your content directory. And because you're going to be creating a lot of these static meshes, you're going to be resizing them. Maybe let's say you want another box. You uh, place one in here. You modify the shape of it. Maybe a different height. Maybe maybe a little bit more narrow. Click accept. Another version is created. Let's say you want another version, uh, some kind of a different version of this box. So you will have to create a new one. And then this gets auto-populated very quickly with a lot of meshes you end up not using. So it becomes very bloated. So you would have to create meshes and then delete the ones that you're not using if you don't want to have, you know, a, a lot of these. Because it's very common that this gets auto-populated by a ton of meshes that you end up not using and you end up using just a few. So there is a better way to actually use this modeling mode to block things out without having to save any of these static meshes inside the content browser. Instead, you can use them almost like a BSP brush by containing those static meshes that you create inside the level itself and not as a static mesh inside the content browser at the same time. And the way you do that is when you create a primitive shape, instead of creating output type of static mesh, choose dynamic mesh. So actually, let me quickly go back to let me cancel this. I'm going to select these. I'm going to delete them from the level. And I'm also going to select these and delete them from the content browser. And then let's say I want to create a box. And instead of using it as a static mesh or creating it as a static mesh, I'm going to change it over to dynamic mesh. So what a dynamic mesh is, it's saved and contained within the level. It does not get placed into the content browser. So if I hit accept, you can see that it didn't create one inside the content browser. So here I can go ahead and uh, duplicate I can create another cylinder, for example. I can click accept. Maybe I want another sphere. And these are dynamic meshes that are saved inside this map only. So this is perfect. It almost like you're using BSP brushes. You can then even go into the modeling, uh, select a mesh and modify. For example, added poly group menu, make this one bigger or maybe smaller. Maybe this one you want to uh, hit accept. So like this one, do the same thing. Hit accept. And you can see nothing was created. Everything is contained inside this level. And this is why I love using this to block things out instead of using static meshes by changing it to dynamic meshes. And it allows for a lot quicker iteration 
So basically, I can use any of these menus and just uh, change the existing static mesh. And then all you need to do to save your block out is make sure you save your map. So you would go to File, Save Current Level As, and then this block out is saved. So you, when you reopen it, these meshes are still here. And this way you avoid this issue with auto populating by a bunch of work in progress static meshes you end up not using. So this is a second method of blocking out your levels using the modeling mode. And a third way to block out your levels or environments inside UE5 is to use existing static meshes that either you created or someone else gave you or you downloaded from the marketplace. Now these static meshes should be modular, meaning that you should be able to place these meshes and snap them together to create a large environment. So they, these meshes cannot be just props or small detailed objects. These need to be modular assets. But you can use these modular assets to block out your level and create it with. So you don't need to use the BSP brushes or the modeling mode to block out your environment because you already have the assets and you just use them to create the environment with. That's what you start with. So for example, uh, I have a few static meshes, uh, modular meshes in here. And I would just begin to drag them into the level. For example, it's uh, this doorway. Then I have a wall. So I can insert a wall and start snapping these together. And because they're modular, they will work perfectly together to create a larger environment for me to, uh, to do something with. So instead of uh, trying to block things out, I would just go ahead and use this as my starting point and block our rooms, hallways, floors, and so on. And that would uh, eliminate the need to block things out first and then having to replace that block out with existing static meshes. So if you have modular meshes already, then start using them right away. You just need to know that modular kit and those meshes really well. So you may have to experiment so that way you know how they work. But go ahead and start using them right away to block out your environments. And then you can detail with props and uh, smaller meshes later. And that's the key to using this third method is begin by using the larger assets first, make sure they're modular, and then add in smaller meshes when you do a detail pass. But if you do not have these meshes already made, then you may need to use the second method to create the block out and then create the meshes and then you would replace that blackout with already made meshes to create the final environment. So use any of these three methods. Primarily, if you're using UE5, it will be using the modeling mode or using existing modular meshes that you already have. And if you come from the old UE4 and you are very comfortable and you want to continue using BSP brushes, you can use the first method as well. So I hope this video helped and I will see you in the next one. Now, if you're just beginning with UE5 and you want to learn Unreal Engine 5 completely from scratch, without any prior experience or knowledge and actually want to learn the modeling mode in detail on how to begin with it and how to model your static meshes with it inside Unreal Engine 5. Then I have a detailed course that spans 11 hours and three modules that will get you up to speed with UE5 very quickly. It is UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, the essential beginner's guide to getting started with UE5. And it's available to download right now by clicking on the link in the description box. Or if you are watching this video on the website, there'll be a link to get the course there as well.